and welcome to Millie White Cooks. Today's recipe is for my utterly indulgent Black Forest trifle. In my step-by-step -step video, I'll show you each stage to making this gluten-free chocolate trifle, including how to make the cherry and berry fruit compote, along with a rich, decadent, real chocolate custard and a pillowy chantilly cream. I'll also be using my completely Moorish gluten-free chocolate buttermilk muffins and I showed you my recipe for these in my last video. Both of these recipes are from my gluten-free Christmas holiday festive feasts and treats cookbook and you can find the links to this in the detail box below. We'll start by taking a quick look at the ingredients list which I've grouped together for each layer of the trifle. So to start you'll need six chocolate muffins. These are my own gluten-free chocolate buttermilk muffins. You can make these a day or two before you need them or well in advance and freeze them before defrosting for the trifle. Of course you could just buy some chocolate muffins but I wouldn't and didn't as I made these yesterday. For the cherry and berry fruit compote we'll need 500 grams or one pound two ounces of black forest fruit mix. Mine is a frozen mixture of cherries, morello cherries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, red currants and black currants and I've defrosted this. For a boozy kick I'm adding two tablespoons of Kirsch liqueur or sherry but this is completely optional. If you don't want to use alcohol just leave it out. To add some sweetness two tablespoons of soft brown sugar. Working our way up the trifle, the next layer is a gorgeous real chocolate custard and to make this we'll need some real chocolate, specifically 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of 70% cocoa chocolate and I always use fair trade chocolate, plus a little extra for decoration at the end. Plus 60 grams of natural caster sugar, which is equivalent to 4 tablespoons and 1 teaspoon of superfine sugar. Here I have the yolks from 4 free range eggs, size medium in the UK or large in the US. And I've frozen the separated wipes to use in a pavlova for another day. Normally I would make this custard using a whole vanilla pod, but I was still waiting for my order to arrive. So I've had to improvise with 1 teaspoon of good quality vanilla extract. But also, I retrieved a scraped out pod from my jar of vanilla sugar, and you'll see why when I make the custard. When I'll also use 480 ml or 2 cups of milk. In this little dish, I have 1 tablespoon of good quality cocoa powder and 2.5 tablespoons of corn flour or cornstarch. And finally, for the chantilly cream topping, we'll need 300 grams of double cream which is the same as one and a quarter cups of heavy cream plus 180 mils or three quarters of a cup of creme fraiche and three tablespoons of icing or powdered sugar. I'm also going to need another teaspoon of vanilla extract too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for lots more gluten free recipes. Now let's get cooking. We'll start by tipping the defrosted fruit and any juices into a saucepan and stirring in the brown sugar followed by the liqueur. If you're not using any alcohol or your fruit is not as juicy as mine is, then now add two tablespoons of water. Give everything a stir to coat the fruits and then cook over a low heat for about 10 minutes until the sugar has dissolved and become syrupy. Set aside to cool. Meanwhile, add the milk to a saucepan. If I had a whole vanilla pod, at this point I'd split it in half lengthwise, scrape out the seeds and add these and the pod to the pan too. But I'm just adding the rescued vanilla pod. Heat the milk on medium low until it comes to scalding point, which is where small bubbles form at the edge of the saucepan, just like this. Then take off the heat. I've popped the egg yolks into a heat proof jug and I'm going to sieve in the cocoa and corn flour to remove any lumps. Next is the vanilla extract, but I wouldn't use this if I had used a whole vanilla pod with its seeds. And then the sugar for the custard. Whisk together into a smooth paste, making sure that there are no lumps. Now this bit is not difficult, but it is important to follow the steps that I show you. And you will then have a deliciously smooth and silky real chocolate custard. Start to slowly whisk in the hot milk, initially just a ladle full at a time. This slow addition of milk to the egg mix means that you won't run the risk of scrambling your eggs, 
which really wouldn't be nice at all. Now that I've slowly whisked in about half of the hot milk, I can pour in the rest. Whisk well, then pour the whole lot back into the pan and return to the stove over a low heat. Again, it's important to follow this step, which is to keep whisking the sauce constantly until it begins to thicken, which will take about 8 to 10 minutes. Also, off camera, I have melted the chocolate, which you can do either in the microwave using 20 second blasts and stir in between each blast, or you can place the chocolate in a bowl over a pan of Bailey simmering water. Now that my custard has thickened, I'm going to whisk in the melted chocolate until well combined and silky. Now what I'm going to do is pour this back into the jug and cover it with kitchen film, but I'm going to put the cling film directly in contact with the chocolate custard, as this will prevent a skin forming on the top of the custard. Then set aside to cool down completely, especially if you're assembling your trifle in a lovely glass dish. So, let's fast forward an hour or so and the custard, fruit compote and muffins have all now cooled down and I have my glass trifle bowl. We can start to assemble the trifle and this stage can be done up to 24 hours before serving. Unwrap the chocolate muffins and slice each one into three thick rounds like this. Lay these across the bottom and up the sides of the trifle bowl, making sure that there are no gaps by cutting up some of the discs to fill in any spaces. Don't worry if it looks a bit messy at this stage, it will all come good. So here you can see, I've just got one more gap to plug. There, all done. Pour in the fruit compote and wiggle it out into an evenish layer. Then pour over the chocolate custard and use the back of the spoon to make sure that it's an even layer and reaches the edge of the bowl all the way round. Cover with a fresh layer of kitchen film, again directly in contact with the custard and put it into the fridge to chill and firm up for at least three hours but it will be perfectly fine to leave in the fridge like this for up to a day. You can add the Chantilly cream topping about an hour before serving. Place the cream into a mixing bowl and whisk until it forms stiff peaks. Sift in the icing sugar, add one teaspoon of vanilla extract along with the creme fraiche and then lightly fold together. Remove the kitchen film from the chilled trifle then, and this bit's really technical, so watch carefully, just dollop the whipped chantilly cream into pretty mounds over the top. Finally, finely grate over a little reserved chocolate and if you want to be really fancy schmancy you can also sprinkle over a little edible glitter too for a pretty festive twist. Wowzers, even if I say so myself, doesn't this look totally scrumptious? I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have. You can also find this recipe in my gluten-free Christmas holiday festive feasts and treats cookbook which is available as a paperback or Kindle book from Amazon or as an e-book from iBooks, Nook or Kobo. All the links to my book are in the description box below and I also have a quick video preview that you can watch too. I hope you'll want to watch more videos in my gluten-free cooking series like these ones here. Thank you so much for your company. Please also let me know if you make this or if you'd like to see a video of any other of my recipes. I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and bye for now.